I spend hours in the lab at microscopes like this one, looking at flies and larvae for my various experiments. But whilst we are all scientists, we can't all afford beautiful microscopes like this one. And that's why I'm teaming up with Discovery Science to show you three simple ways to make a microscope with just a laser pointer, ready for you to celebrate World Science Day on November the 10th. The first microscope lets you look at cool stuff that's suspended in water, like this filthy pond water here. So we're using a laser pointer. Now laser is an acronym for the light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. And what's one of the things that's special about laser light is that it's directional, which means that all the waves are going the same direction and not spreading out from the source. That's going to give us a crisper image. But all microscopes need a lens, and we're using the water as its own lens with a syringe, which you can get from a pharmacy or really cheaply online. So you want to suck up just a couple of mils of water, and then, difficult bit, get it so you get just one spherical drop at the end and then the laser is going to project through onto here and it's going to be diffracted by the water. So I'm just going to rest my syringe on these cups. And now just using another cup and I use some blue tack to make it a bit easier. Rest the laser. This bit's easier in the dark. So now your laser's on and you've got your droplet waiting at the end of the syringe. You've just got to line everything up. I say just, it's quite fiddly getting everything in line but let's have a go. You'll watch it projected on there. Oh, oh, there we go. It's very hard to say exactly what we're looking at because depending on where it is on the droplet, that'll affect its magnification. But some of these just targets will be single cells, whether that's bacteria or maybe single cell algae. But then you've got some which aren't just drifting through the droplet, but they've got powered movement. And these are likely to be very small animals, maybe water fleas or mites or something like that. Oh, this one, this one actually looks like it's swimming. Look at that one. Oh my goodness! And you think that all of this is in a single droplet of water? Imagine what's going on in the rest of the pond. The next type of microscope is great if you want to look at things that you can't suspend in a drop of water. So for example, the cells of a red onion. And we're actually going to turn a phone into a microscope. We're going to use the camera on the back and using a lens, you're going to be able to see amazing things and then really quickly send them on Snapchat or Instagram to all of your friends so everyone can see the magic of the microscopic world. You're going to need, again, your laser pointer, but not all of the laser pointer, just the lens right at the end where the light comes out. So now we've got just the lens of the laser pointer and this is acting just like the water droplet in the last example. It's just diffracting those light rays. So now it's time to attach it to the tiny camera on the back of your phone. I find, as with most problems, that blue tack is the best solution for this. I need a light. I'm using a head torch here. Don't stare at the lights for too long. And then uh, I need a microscope slide. So I found some clear plastic lying around. I'll snip off part of that and stick this to my light with, guess what, more blue tack. Time for the onion. The reason we're using onion is because one, it's a plant and plant cells are surprisingly large actually. They can be just about a tenth of a millimetre or so, which compared to animal cells is really quite large. And also red onion, the red is a natural pigment, that's why they're so good for you. But it means that you get a lot more contrast between the different cells as you'll see in a minute. Unfortunately, red, red onion does mean that you start to cry as soon as you start chopping it up and preparing it for a microscope. So if I just get so overwhelmed by the science, I just love microscopes so much. It's actually just the sulfur dioxide gas from the onion entering my eyes, dissolving in the liquid of my eyes, forming sulfuric acid. And of course, an acid in your eyes is a bit of an irritant, so the tears will start flowing as you just get so involved in the science. So now I've scored a little rectangle in the surface of the red part of the onion. And I'm just using some bathroom tweezers to pull off a, just the top section. And I'm going to pop it over the lines of my microscope. So now you've got everything you need. So the lens is acting just like the drop of water from beforehand. You've got a bright light instead of from the laser, it's coming from this torch. So it's just time to put them together. There we go. Isn't that fantastic? So what you can see there are the purple cells, which are filled with probably anthocyanins or some purple dye. 
The white borders around the cells will be the cell walls that don't have any of that red pigment. Some really clear images of the cells there. The third and last microscope, a K, isn't exactly a microscope, but it does allow you to see the microscopic even if you're super lazy because you need no equipment whatsoever except your eyeballs and a bright sky or bright surface. But if you're in the UK like me, or you're so lazy that you can't be bothered to go outside, then have a look at this. When you stare at a bright blank surface, you'll probably be able to see small gray dots and squiggles moving across your vision. These are Muscae volitantes, Latin for flying flies, or as they're more commonly known, floaters. Floaters are just lumps of collagen floating inside the jelly of your eyeball or vitreous humor. So the vitreous humor, the jelly, is made up pretty much of water and collagen. Collagen being the protein that gives structure to your skin and to your hair. But as you get older, this collagen breaks down and little chunks of it fall off. And when the little chunks of protein pass in front of your retina, the light detecting cells at the back of your eye, they cast a shadow. And this shadow is what you see. Now I've shown you three ways to delve into the microscopic realms in your own home, it's time for you to join our experiment. Discovery Science are hosting a competition for World Science Day, where all you've got to do is create your own home experiment, film it, just like this, and then upload it to facebook.com forward slash your discovery science. If you do that by November the 30th, then you're in for the chance to win a hoverboard. I never thought I'd be saying that in 2015. So be as creative and as scientific and as inventive as you can. Have a great time doing it and good luck. This is a hydrophone or an underwater microphone to go rock falling and listen to the sounds of the animals in the rock pools. So, so with our piano playing, fire breathing, photosynthesizing, you can make a song like out a of this. Yes. Like a bat. That is what the top scientific minds in America would do. Now,